We have two guests. Amara Nwangpa is a director at the nonprofit organization Erduo. Uh, he joins us from Abuja. But let's start in Lagos with Olusheun Oningbinde, a Nigerian data analyst, the co founder of Budget. It's a Nigerian startup. Olusheun and Amara, for that matter, thanks so much for your time. Uh, just with your data expertise, if you don't mind, Olusheun, just explain this issue to us. So, if we start at the beginning, there were more than 100 million people in Nigeria eligible to vote. More than 90 million people then registered to vote, but only 25 million ballots have been counted. Does that mean that only 25 million people actually turned up to vote? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. Um, only 25 million people turned up to vote, according to Heineck. Um, there were huge uh, allegations that um, votes were suppressed um, in some strongholds of the opposition. And also that uh, turn up to vote also can be loosely defined. Um, a lot of people were also disenfranchised um, using rigging, um, especially in the west, eastern, and the southern part of the region. Um, so uh, I think the, also the issue of the cash crunch, Nigeria is going through a process where um, the higher denomination of Naira being replaced right in the middle of the election, and a lot of Nigerians are facing a lot of pain and anguish. And that is also driving the fact that um, that's creating most people not showing up. It's really difficult for most poor and vulnerable people to walk miles or to travel to get to vote. Um, it's very disappointing that this is Nigeria's worst turnout in the last, um, I mean, since the beginning of democracy. Um, it's really, really tough. And, and I think um, a lot of questions are meant to be asked. Each of the main candidates won um, 12 states, including the FCD each. Um, and also one state was won by uh, by NNMP in Kano State. Um, so for the declaration by Heine, for me, this is not uh, a comforting victory for whoever wins it, because it shows that um, a significant number of Nigerians even voted against the the, the announced candidate. So it's a whole time to do a lot of introspection and also a lot of time to do a lot of searching in terms of um, how they want to deliver Nigeria from its alien economy, its poor woman indicators, uh, development indicators, and now especially how did they bring back the country as a united one. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Okay, and that's looking forward. But for the moment, Olushan, we just want to just get to the bottom of exactly what these numbers might mean and whether they are in fact correct. Amara, voter suppression through not allowing people to vote by violently intimidating them or making sure that the queues are so long that people won't be able to cast their ballots, that's one thing. The opposition is saying that the electronic voting system did not recognize their supporters. So are we still convinced that only 24 to 25 million people voted when there were more than 80 million registered voters? The opposition is saying, that actually there would have been more votes in their favor if that electronic voting system had worked. What do we know about that? Well, um, first of all, uh, what I would like to point out is that before the election, we had a lot of excitement going into this election. There was, in fact, uh, many um, people who were expecting that there will be a surge in turnout of voters for this election. So it's very disappointing that the final figures are showing that this is perhaps the worst turnout in Nigeria's history. Um, and a lot of reasons have been adduced for this. Uh, I hear Shio uh, given quite a lot of reasons about logistics and so on. Uh, but there has been evidence, uh, including by election observers across the country and also on social media with videos about attempts across the country to intimidate voters. Many uh, locations across the country where elections did not actually hold, but results were declared. And there are also allegations that the uh, voter, uh, the returns on the elections during collations, where the, co the, the collation process was doctored. Um, and so that this figure, I think, is heavily contested across the country in terms of, uh, you know, uh, it reflecting the actual um, intention of people to vote on, on Saturday. Uh, but uh, to the specific question about technology, uh, there were the technology that INEC had 
you know, uh, promoted and highlighted across, uh, you know, before the election across the country uh, and advertised as a, a way to check uh, manipulation and to improve uh, voter experience, uh, you know, during the election failed significantly. Um, there were challenges uh, that were observed uh, by uh, independent observers across the country with the technology in terms of its reliability. On election day, I think uh, it was the, co the report by the Coalition of Civil Society uh, called the Civil Society Situation Room uh, highlighted about 14 percent of the locations where they visited. The, there were malfunctions with the uh, uh, BVAS, uh, but also beyond the uh, the BVAS system, which is a system that's used to accredit voters, and, and accreditation is a critical step before you, you could be handed a ballot uh, paper. There was also uh, complaints about how slow the entire process was. In fact, in a particular polling unit that I observed, um, the, the rate was about 40 voters an hour, which, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and in that kind of location where you had about 1,000 voters, it was almost impossible to go through all of those votes in the time that was required. Yeah. In addition, uh, listen, uh, if you don't mind, Amara, we're going to have to move on. Uh, there is other news to report, but this is a big breaking story. Uh, I'm really glad you pointed out the difficulties uh, with uh, the issues at the polling stations because it's worth pointing out that some people will have been allowed to vote, but their result may not have been uploaded into the final tally, which is what the opposition was saying. And it's a completely different matter if actually you weren't able to vote even though you were registered. So that's a slight distinction. Amara, 37% yes. out of the lowest turnout probably in Nigeria's history, what does that do to the legitimacy of Bola Tinubu, the new president? Well, um, there, there is a lot of uh, disappointment with the election uh, and uh, there are questions. Many um, um, observers, both international and domestic, and also commenters on, on TV and media and on social media, are uh, questioning the, the legitimacy of, of this result. Uh, also, the political parties, um, particularly the Labour Party, the People's Democratic Party, and ADC, have also questioned uh, the, the legitimacy of this process, the entire process. Uh, so be, beyond just the outcome itself, which shows that a, a, a tiny percentage or a, a small percentage of Nigeria's uh, voting population voted for, for this outcome, uh, there's also issues about the legitimacy of the process itself. And that obviously puts a serious burden on, on this, this outcome uh, in the eyes of Nigerians, because it doesn't appear that it's an outcome that's desirable by, by most Nigerians. Uh, because if you look at those numbers, it doesn't reflect the majority of people who uh, even voted on the day, not necessarily even uh, people who were eligible to vote. Okay, uh, let's go back to uh, Olusheyun in Lagos. Olusheyun, a data stroke political question. Does the data show what the main concerns of voters were? And the fact that Bola Tinubu is from the ruling party, does that not mean actually a continuation pretty much of previous policies? So will those people's concerns be met by a continuation of policies? Because many people say that Muhammadu Buhari failed on too many fronts. Um, it's a fact that um, the Muhammad Buhari government failed on many fronts. The economy uh, witnessed a significant drop in security. It was a challenge in the northeast, the northwest corridor. Um, we also have even corruption issues are still there. Um, President-elect uh, Bola Tinubu has declared Bahainek has promised to continue um, the policies of Muhammad Buhari, and he also plans to be a man of himself. I would just say um, we will wait and see. Um, Nigerians need to just uh, be ready to hold uh, him accountable. Um, and uh, while the litigation still go within the courts and this whole election process is being certified, but they must be willing to hold him accountable to all of his promises. He had a very robust manifesto. He made some significant promises that, that has to be looked into. Um, the whole work of citizenry and getting invested in 
holding government accountable as to happen now. Uh, the challenge is that um, he is, well, he, the legitimacy question is, is there because he certified um, the requirement of the law. I mean, as uh, Ananik has declared him the winner. But the question is also that look at the number of people that have voted overwhelmingly against you. And it means that you have to be a listening, you have to be a unifying president um, when you are inaugurated. And you also have to make sure that you apply ideas that can transform the Nigerian economy. The biggest issue in Nigeria today is the economy. Inflation is in, is in 200 percent upwards. Um, the currency at the parallel market has moved from 216 naira to over 752 naira currently. And currently, you have insecurity now in pockets of Castina, Zamfara, Kaduna, you know, um, and also even Niger, different places across the country, even in the southeast and the south south. So he has a lot of work to do, and that's why people had, you know. A, a lot of people had misgivings or maybe worried about does he have the capacity I mean, in terms of health, in terms of, you know, to be able to even deliver this. But he has to prove Nigerians wrong. The burden now is on him and also another burden on Nigeria to occupy the civic space and hold him accountable yeah. in a rigorous Absolutely. manner. Olusheun and Amara, thank you so much indeed for your time. You'll both know this. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has never overturned the result for a presidential election. Those opposition parties, they have three weeks to make any appeals they may wish to. Thank you so much indeed, gentlemen.